Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. With e-commerce off the charts, many small and growing warehouses are asking, how can I get ahead when my warehouse is barely keeping up? The answer is future-ready warehouse tech from Zebra Technologies. Warehouses can simplify and upgrade all processes, from automated inventory management to hands-free picking with Zebra's tailored, scalable mobile solutions. They're simple and intuitive. There's never been a better time to upgrade for success with Zebra. How can your warehouse get ahead? The answer's in black and white. Get the answers at zebra.com slash the answer. That's zebra.com slash the answer. Fulfillment demand continues to skyrocket and outpace available labor. To keep up, warehouse operators are turning to flexible fulfillment solutions like Six River Systems. Utilizing Six River Systems' award-winning combination of collaborative robots, artificial intelligence, and operational expertise will make your associates and wall-to-wall fulfillment workflow more efficient. No new infrastructure, no change to warehouse layout, easy to deploy and scale, easy to train and retain associates, all at half the cost of traditional automation. Want to take your fulfillment operation to the next level? Level? Go to www.sixriver.com to learn more. That's www.sixriver.com to learn more. March 28th, Modex 2022 lets you see what's coming and take advantage of it to power your supply chain with more possibilities for years to come. With 850 exhibitors and education sessions, Modex 2022 is where you'll find the more of everything. From illuminating education to next generation technology and equipment in action to the latest equipment and system solutions for your supply chain needs. Visit modexshow.com and join us March 28th to 31st, 2022. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas. From the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. On today's episode, I am going to be joined by Sandy Lake, and she is the Director of Logistics at the Georgia Center of Innovation. She's going to talk to us about why the Center of Innovation is a great place for logistics companies to tap into and to use their resources and why Georgia is a great place to have a logistics company in general. Uh, We're also going to talk about the Logistics Summit, which Georgia has been putting on since uh, 2009 and which just recently happened this year as well. So she's going to tell us all about that and we're going to talk a little bit of logistics in uh, Georgia. So Sandy, welcome to the show. Joe, how are you? Thank you. Glad to be here. Appreciate this opportunity to, to talk about Georgia and all that we have going on here. Definitely happy to have you on. And, and obviously, you know, Georgia is such a, a logistics hub for the country. Obviously, a lot of things going on there, a lot of companies based as well that are in the supply chain arena. So, so why don't you tell us you are at the center of innovation for Georgia. So why don't you tell us what, what exactly is the, the center of innovation in, in Georgia? So the Center of Innovation is a unique team within Georgia's Department of Economic Development. Okay. We are, our mission is to clear the path to innovation for Georgia businesses. Mm. And there's actually six centers. Each one is focused on a different strategic industry. I'm focused on logistics, and we'll talk more about that one later. But there's one on ag tech, one on aerospace, one on advanced manufacturing, energy uh, technology, and information technology with a sort of a focus within that on cybersecurity, health IT, and digital entertainment. Mm. But for the Logistics Center, we offer the same type of 
clearing the path to innovation. But right. sometimes that looks a little different in logistics than it does in those other areas. Mm. So for us, it might be connecting a problem holder to a problem solver, so to speak. So mm. we have companies that, that come to us sometimes just looking for the right type of service provider and they don't know where to begin that search. Okay. And so we work to stay abreast of sort of who's doing what in the industry so that we can quickly help them navigate to the right resource because there is a lot of resource in Georgia's vast you know, network of logistics resources. Or it might be navigating through our university and technical college systems to help with additional research or maybe it's specialized training or it could be a multitude of things that they're looking at. The other thing that, that we offer is an, a monthly logistics market snapshot okay. where we pull together over 50 different stats, facts, figures, and indices around mm -hmm. the U.S. economy as well as what's happening in trucking, the railroads, what's happening with air cargo, mm -hmm. ocean shipping, ocean carriers, as well as warehousing and distribution. And it's just a very concise compilation that we aggregate and curate and pull together for the industry and send that out on a monthly basis. And that has proved quite valuable mm -hmm. to, to our industry, just having that sort of quick view of all the different drivers that are influencing the logistics landscape. Very interesting. And, and, you know, obviously logistics is such a, such a hot topic now and has always been a, a very important topic. But I think with the, the pandemic and everything has really shined the, the light on logistics and, and supply chain in general. People have been, become more aware of its existence and, and necessity overall. But, you know, I mentioned that early in it, that Georgia is really a, a big logistics hub for, for the country. There's a lot of supply chain companies that are, that are based out of there. There's a lot of big distribution centers there as well. But why why do you think that is? What What is it that Georgia kind of, I guess, offers to, to logistics companies mm -hmm. that, that makes them want to have such a big presence there? Well, you're right. So we are uniquely complete in our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we have the, the most extensive road network in the Southeast that's nationally ranked. We have the largest um, intermodal hub east of the Mississippi and second only to Chicago when it comes to rail. Yeah. We have the, of course, the world's busiest international airport that's ranked, I believe, number 10 in air cargo operations. Yeah. We also have, of course, our, our shining star in our infrastructure is the fact that we have the third largest and fastest growing uh, port in the nation. Mm. Um, it's the westernmost port on the East Coast. And you probably heard about the backlog during the, the oh, yeah. pandemic on the West Coast, the East Coast. Well, Georgia has been able to whittle theirs down. So they're, they're not having backlog issues. Mm. So back uh, mid, even by mid January, mid February, they, they didn't have any ships at anchor now they have the typical maybe one or two, sometimes three ships at anchor. But because of the way that our port is structured, they are able to put all of their uh, resources onto a ship to discharge that cargo much faster than what's typically called a landlord port that might have various different terminal operators. And so that's what creates those long queues and that long backup. Um so having that that complete infrastructure gives us a unique advantage because it gives companies agility um, like they had to use during the pandemic. Some of our major manufacturers, for example, that maybe were used to bringing in parts for their manufacturing through the ports suddenly had to switch to air because, because of the backlog, because of the supply chain disruptions because of the de delays they couldn't they couldn't afford another 30 to 45 days on the water when their parts actually became available to bring in mm. so they were having to use air and of course air is the most expensive option but at least right. in Georgia you can pivot easily between those options 
We saw an increase in intermodal traffic for the same reason as people looked to figure out ways to get their product um, to market faster, um, particularly when there was such a trucking crunch. However, that's another advantage that Georgia has had is that they've had a, a strong number of truck drivers sign on to do drayage at the port mm-hmm. and to get certified and qualified to be able to do that. So they, we've been um, fortunate in that the way our assets are, are, are structured mm-hmm. and the uh, connectivity that we have between our infrastructure makes it easy to you know, be a global gateway to the South to the largest metropolitan hub in the Southeast. And, you know, because of our on terminal, we're the only East coast port with two uh, class one railroads on terminal. And that makes it able to get, you know, to the Midwestern sections of the country within a day Mm -hmm. uh, uh, or even two days. That's another thing Georgia has done as, increased their capacity and capability at the port for rail that just recently came online last November. So all of these different asset advantages that we have Mm -hmm. create that unmatched sort of service offerings that you can get in Georgia that you, you know, there are ports in other Southern states, but maybe they don't have, you know, the, the international air travel capacity or the road network or the extensive rail network that we have. So when you put it all together, along with the connections with our university and education systems for for training and education in logistics and supply chain, because as you well know, there's a there's quite a breadth of different types of training from, you know, the frontline worker all the way to the data analysts and and PhD in logistics and supply chain. And the center helps be that force of connection statewide to bring the industry together so that we're constantly in communication uh, with each other to, to know, you know, how Georgia can better position themselves to be a leader in in logistics. And the, the summit is one way that we do that as well. Okay. And yeah, obviously, you know, there's a lot of great resources there for, for logistics companies and it makes sense that why it's such a, such a big hub. And I didn't, I didn't know all the information about the port down there actually. So it was very interesting. And, and obviously, you know, not having a, a backlog at a, at a port nowadays is, is a huge deal. I'm up here in New Jersey and I certainly see the, the backlogs up here as well. So very interesting stuff. And, and you mentioned in there the, the logistics summit. So obviously, you know, Georgia has embraced the, the logistics community and, and supply chain community as well. And it sounds like the, the center of innovation for, and in Georgia itself has, kind of taken a, another step with that and, and coming up with this logistics summit, which started in, in 2009. So, so how has the logistics summit really kind of benefited Georgia and helped with some growth in the logistics sector? We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days, because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Well, just the fact that we are the only state in the Southeast and really the only state that we know of across the country that's actually doing a logistics focused summit. There's national organizations that do supply chain, Mm -hmm. but for a state led event, as far as we know, we're the only ones that are doing that. And the, Mm -hmm. the reasons for that is that because we've identified this as such a strategic industry, 
we bring together both the public and the private sector to learn from each other. It helps us sort of create that voice of the industry so that Georgia is not creating policy or things of that nature that would inhibit or the, the growth of this industry so that they can better understand, you know, what the barriers are. For example, one of the things that the center has done is put together a um, task force around commercial driving. You know, there's a, there's okay. a huge task force around that. Georgia was already offering free education, tuition reimbursements for folks that went into these types of strategic careers. They do this for over a hundred different programs in the state that are considered strategic but one of the things that we were able to do is let them know some of the barriers that were still needing to be addressed that, that commercial truck drivers mm-hmm. or folks wanting to get into this industry are running into. And so because we already had that relationship with the industry and because we already had that connectivity you know, with the policymakers who were familiar with the summit, familiar with the center, familiar with you know, what we do and what we bring to the table, then we got invited, you know, to share with them some of these things. And then they were able to be more informed in how they crafted their policies. And so the summit enables us to to be able to continue to provide that sort of statewide touch point. If anybody, you know, has a question around logistics or needs to find out more about any particular subject we're they know that they can come here as a starting point we may not okay. have all the answers but we certainly can get them to the right resource and what it has also done is is spurred business in our state so we we don't have any way of literally capturing that we just hear it from anecdotally but yeah several years ago we know that one company had a it was several million dollars that they ended up garnering in a contract from a company that had come to the summit from out of state, met with a service provider here and in conversation, you know, learned that that service provider could, could meet their needs for the Southeast. Mm. And they ended up with a new contract. Likewise, we've had companies that were based, for example, in the Atlanta Metro area that, expanded out to rural Georgia as a result of their interactions with port personnel and finding out the needs that, you know, their service, if they were located closer to the port, there was more opportunity. So they actually expanded their business. So they're now they're located in Metro Atlanta as well as in rural Georgia. So on and on, there's just story after story like that, where connections have been made at the summit, either with, speakers that are speaking or with other attendees through networking time that have continued to expand and grow. There's, there's a company that actually does a lot of representation of other companies and, and he got started and started his business really began to flourish once he began attending the Georgia logistics summit Mm -hmm. and continued to meet and add to his connections and, and every year we've seen him add to the companies that he represents, one of which being one of the newest members of the logistics uh, supply chain technology community in Georgia. So okay. they've already connected as a result of this networking through the uh, Center of Innovation and through this, the outlet of the summit to, to help with that. And then the other thing that the summit has done is, as you well know, that Businesses that are just getting started, startups particularly in technology, they lack the marketing opportunities for their business. They're so focused in on starting a business that they don't really know how to market the business or they're just constrained financially from being able to really promote themselves. Absolutely. And so the summit gives us an opportunity to showcase those new technology companies and help get their name out there, get the word out there uh, about these companies. And we've seen success happen and watched through the years as some of those companies that we have spotlighted and highlighted in the past have continued to grow and be successful. The other thing that the summit 
did was allowed Georgia, it was, it was not the factor, obviously it wasn't the deciding factor, but it was a uh, major factor when they were comparing Georgia to other southeastern states for holding one of the largest material handling trade shows in the southeast. Right. They, when they began their search, they were blown away by the fact that we had a center of innovation for logistics. We mm-hmm. had a summit already in place and they saw that they had an instant network that they could connect into mm-hmm. to help promote their own trade show. And so we've had that successful event here ever since 2012, I think, yeah. and it has continued to grow. And so just on and on anecdotally, there's just been a lot of ways in which embracing this summit idea has continued to spotlight Georgia and its assets and its resources and its people, Mm. both educate, you know, both our education system, as well as our infrastructure, as well as our quality of workforce, as well as our strategic location, just, you know, all of that, it, it helps to showcase and spotlight why Georgia is a good place for logistics, but also a good place to do business. Yeah, definitely, and and obviously the the logistics summit is a as you mentioned is a, a great place for for people to connect and, and find out more about the logistics business. And I, I love the fact that you mentioned in there that you know there's a lot of these startups now in the logistics world that are coming up with new technologies and and new ideas and, and different ways to kind of tackle some of the issues that we're seeing in in logistics and supply chain, which a lot has to do with labor issues, which you guys are also tackling as well with the training aspect. But it, it's great that they're able to connect with other people to figure out how to take their ideas and maybe their their innovations themselves and and get them to to grow and really be able to to take off and and make it into a, a viable business as you said in a lot of startups they don't have the either the the funding to to do those types of things or maybe they don't have the the business uh, acumen to to go after and, and make their idea into a to a viable business so so it's very great that you're you're providing that resource, and then the logistics summit is is creating that awareness as well to maybe people that didn't realize what what resources are out there. So so it's very good. And so you know you've been doing this since 2009, so we're on the the 13th year now, I guess, in in 2022. And the and 2022 summit just just happened. Talk to us a little bit about you know what was different maybe this year compared to prior years especially i guess at this point and probably coming out of the pandemic i'm sure we made it a little different as well so so how how has it been different uh this year as and compared to the the previous years well of course you know there was a renewed energy of just getting Mm -hmm. back together again because we hadn't been together since 2019 and we had to host it virtually and in 2021 we weren't able to host it at all in 2020 So there definitely was that renewed fervor and energy to Mm -hmm. just be back together again. You know, logistics never stopped throughout the pandemic. So they've been an essential workforce, you know, ever from the get go and have had to go through the highs and lows of this pandemic throughout. So looking for information as well as connection, but, but also information about, you know, one of our topics was around digitalization, a vision of supply chain digitalization in 2030. And that was a a very interesting topic because the pandemic has only accelerated the adoption of technology. And you probably hear and see uh, a lot of that in -hmm. in warehousing. And so, you know, what we found was the summit itself You know, the formatting and everything was the same as we've always had. But yet, you know, there was that interest in what what's the state doing as well. So we had an update from the Georgia Department of Transportation's director of planning, because we're in the process right now of updating our freight and logistics plans for the state of Georgia. So that was interesting to the group. We also had a regional group of educators that came together and talked about the various training programs within the region in which this was held, which was in Macon, but they were representative of, you know, all of the good logistics and supply chain programs statewide, but it was a good representation of, of a high school 
technical college system as well as a university system hmm. in that, just like we mentioned before, talking about that entire breadth of skills and, right. and skills that are needed in this industry, as well as training and education to hmm. be able to meet the needs of a, of a very transformative industry. You know, a lot has changed right. in just two short years and you've probably had a lot of heard a lot about, you know, the, the, just the crush of e-commerce and oh, what yeah. that did to yeah. forever, basically forever changed logistics yeah. and Consumer supply behavior, chain. Yeah. It's, it's completely mm-hmm. changed. So, so you mentioned in there, you know, kind of some of the, the education things going on. And I'm curious, you know, it's like you just mentioned, you know, logistics is kind of just exploded, you know, where some other industries have kind of went downward you know logistics and, and supply chain just kind of took off like crazy and it's it's become more popular is the right word but it certainly have been more awareness created around it so in that sense i mean are, are you seeing from the uh, center of innovation and down there in georgia i mean are you seeing a lot of people that are now looking to either start their education in in logistics or are looking at the current landscape and saying like they want to they want to change what they were doing and switch over to like a logistics or or supply chain role are you seeing more interest in in that direction well we are one of the things that I didn't mention before that we've done three years ago, we did an economic impact study of Georgia's logistics industry. And and we're currently in the process of updating that. Mm -hmm. And so that was, you know, over that three year span, we've seen what in 2018, there was one in every 14 jobs owes owed its existence to logistics Mm -hmm. today. That number is one in nine. The numbers of logistics establishments has nearly doubled in that time frame from 15,000 to over 32,000 okay. with b- those businesses being directly in transportation, warehousing, logistics and delivery service businesses. Then jobs have increased nationwide in warehousing, mm-hmm. but Georgia has outpaced the nation 90, almost 93% to just over 80%. So wow. all of that kind of goes to what you're saying. And, and we have seen an increase in those jobs, in the numbers of people filling those jobs. I've We've had reported, like I was mentioning earlier down there in Savannah, mm-hmm. they had over 600 applicants trying to get their CDL because they saw the opportunity in uh, truck driving, in transportation. Oh, right. Um, so all, you know, 600 weren't able to be, that was larger than any one class that could be yeah. serviced in, you know, in any school anywhere in the country. Mm-hmm. So some of those folks had to be, you know, turned away till till another time. But yes, we have seen uh, growth in that industry. It, it, its economic sales impact three years ago was a little over sixty billion dollars. Today it's eighty three point four billion. So it's mm-hmm. grown over twenty billion dollars in just three years. Wow. So there's there's just been all kinds of indicators in this that we've seen in comparison between the twenty eighteen data and the twenty twenty one data to support the fact that there is growth in this industry in Georgia, but it's probably uh, indicative of the growth that's happening you know, across the country as well. So, yeah, I mean, it seems like, you know, especially the numbers that you're throwing out there, I mean, it's huge growth and obviously the interest is is certainly surging. And I, I think you're kind of telling us there, and obviously it's, I think, an in, in, in indicator, you know, across the country as well, that so much is going on with logistics. And I love what you said about how many, you know, jobs kind of came out of logistics initially and and i love that you guys are covering all of the bases from you know you mentioned truck driver to warehouse worker to to data analyst as well because it's all needed to to support the industry and and keep things moving which you know as you said you know logistics never really stopped it can't stop because 
if it stopped, then we wouldn't have uh, anything, basically. We need to get logistics so everything can keep moving and, and get to where we need it to get to, whether it's through e-commerce, delivery, or get to the store so we can pick it up. Somehow it has to get there. So, so it's great that you guys are embracing it so much in Georgia and you're offering this uh, logistics summit as well. If people want to find out more information about Georgia and, and the logistics development that's going on there, um, from the Center of Innovation. How, how can they do that? Well, thank you. Yes, they can contact georgialogistics.com, and that's Georgia spelled out. But georgialogistics.com will get you to our website, and you'll see there how to connect with us, and we would welcome that. Okay, and then the Georgia Logistics Summit, I'm sure there'll be another one in 2023. Is it, What can we look forward to for that? Anything you can uh, tease a little bit or no? Well, in 2023, we'll be in the Savannah region, Okay, highlighting that area, probably focused a lot around the port and so much. There's been so many exciting new developments in and around the port area that we haven't fully set our our focus Mm -hmm. yet on what the uh, topics will be but we will definitely be showcasing and highlighting these new developments in and around the port for sure as part of the program march 8th in 2023 is when that next summit is scheduled okay great and march 8th definitely mark that on the calendar i'm looking forward to that hopefully i can make it down there next year i'd love to check out savannah i've never been actually so it'd be good excuse to get down there and and do that so sandy i want to thank you so much for for joining me on the show today i'm definitely going to put more information at the newhouse.com so people can find out more about the center of innovation in georgia and what it's doing for the logistics space as well as the logistics summit that just passed and coming up next year as well so sandy thank you so much for uh coming on the podcast today You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from the New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for The New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.